Hi, I'm Midnight Mule. This is what was written and this is part two of me looking at what the Watchtower have written about the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. In my previous video I looked at their current teachings of what the Bible apparently means. In this video I'm going to go back in time and see what they've said in the past. So normal copyright fair use notice. And then so in the previous video Jehovah first and the last from these Bible verses means Jehovah. Alpha and Omega from these Bible verses means Jehovah. Beginning and the end, these Bible verses means Jehovah. So that was all quite straightforward. If you've not seen the last video, you may want to see that one, which will then give a bit of context for this video. Okay, now back in 1917, of course, they didn't have the New World Translation. I think that came out in the 50s, early 50s. They were using the King James Version. And in the King James Version, we have an interesting verse we can look at here, or interesting verses rather. So Revelation 1, 11 to 13, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. And then it goes down in verse 13. Okay, verse 12, John says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, said the Son of Man. Now what we know from the Bible plain teaching is the Son of Man is Jesus. Therefore Alpha and Omega, first and the last, this is clearly talking about um, Jesus is saying I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. But they currently use the New World Translation. So if I disappear for a minute so we can see this properly. Revelation 1.11 says, saying, What you see, write in a scroll and send to the seven congregations. And they've got some words missing. They are missing the words, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Now why is it those words are missing? The King James uses the manuscripts, for which there are, I think, over 7,000 of them, all of which would say Alpha and Omega the first and the last. Whereas the Watchtower using Westcott and Hort's translation of the New World, of the, uh, sorry, of the Greek, which their scrolls, their, um, sorry, manuscripts don't include the words Alpha and Omega. And so they're missing. And it's not just the New World translation. The NIV, for example, also has those words missing. Anyway, back to where we were. So had I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, been in the New World Translation at verse 11, things would have been a bit different of what they currently say, perhaps. So Babylon the Great has fallen. Here it is, Babylon the Great has fallen. This is what I'm going to look at just now. There's an interesting few sentences in here which is relevant to all this. And this was copyrighted and written in 63 and I've got the 1981 reprint of it and on page 671 it says in the year 1917 there was published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society the book entitled The Finished Mystery which was their first commentary on the entire book of Revelation. So something I've mentioned before and um, oh here it is sorry The Finished Mystery I've mentioned this before, but this was written in 1917 and it was the last book that was written before Jesus apparently searched the earth to look at the various religious organisations and decided the Watchtower, that was the organisation that's going to represent me because of their teachings and their understandings. So you can be sure that Jesus knew what exactly was in this book. So everything in this book Jesus was presumably more or less happy with because he chose them. Let's keep going. Though that book was banned by Gentile governments during the last year of World War I, Jehovah's Witnesses refused to seal up the words of the prophecy of this scroll. So I've got to say something about that now. The reason it was banned, it was World War I, and there's one verse they take apart, I think it's one verse, they spend several, verse, several pages in the book, The Finished Mystery, where they're very derogatory about the American government and the governments of the world in general. And so because there's a war effort on and morale is really important to the government, this book was banned because it was very anti-government. It had nothing to do with their general interpretation of Revelation. 
nothing to do with what they represented. However, the Watchtower make a big thing about persecution and like to make out they're very persecuted. As an aside, if you look at persecution and religious persecution, they're one of the least persecuted religious groups out there. But they want you to believe, or they want their followers to believe, that they're persecuted because of what they represent, and rather who they represent. But this is completely untrue and unfounded. Anyway, uh, da, da, da. in the year 1930, the same society published the book entitled Light in Two Volumes, which was a more up-to-date explanation of the entire revelation to John. So here we have the light, or uh, yeah, light, books uh, one and book two. Now, they have the cheek to say um, it's a more up-to-date explanation. Now, this could make you think that there was one or two minor amendments that were somehow relevant to the times they were living in or had this slight, slight change. Now, I'll be looking at light in the third video, but I can assure you it's slightly more than a slightly up-to-date explanation. So that's not very generous the way they've said that there. All right, let's keep going. Let's have a look. So the Finnish mystery and light, we've looked at that. So here's the Finnish mystery from 1917. On page 15, they're looking at Revelation 1.8, which says, I am the Alpha, I am also the Omega. And they simply say that's the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. The beginning and the ending. Our Lord's great honour is shown that he was not only the first of God's creation, but the last. Now, anyone who's followed me on this channel for a while will probably won't be surprised to hear me say that I don't believe that Jesus was a creation of God but we'll get to that perhaps in another video. But the point is here, it's talking about Jesus and showing that the beginning and the ending, Alpha and Omega, is actually about Jesus. Now, if we go on a bit further, saith the Lord God, which is Jesus, which, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. It is since his resurrection that the message has gone forth, all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Consequently, it is only since then that he could be called the Almighty. So back in 1917, the Watchtower Society was comfortable saying Jesus was the Almighty and Jesus was the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Now on page 318, Revelation 21, 6, we have, And he saith unto me, it is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. It was the Father's good pleasure that the Blessed One, the only begotten of the Father, should accomplish the entire program of redemption and restitution and be forever the associate and representative of the Father. Blah, blah, blah. And it goes on. So clearly this is being attributed to Jesus. Finished Mystery, page 336. They look at Revelation 22:13. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Our Lord, which is Jesus, tells us over and over again and gives first references to Revelation that he is the beginning and the ending, the first and the last of God's creation or the creation of God. That part I don't agree with. However, they are certainly saying that Jesus is Alpha Omega, first, last, beginning and the end. Now on page 21, we have... Um, Revelation 118, this is 117 up here, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. We must recognise that our Lord is the one who was the beginning of creation. They've gone about that again, still not agreeing with it. So in summary, what we can see from back in 1917 in their teaching, they were comfortable that in Isaiah, which isn't covered in the finished mystery, we didn't look at it today, the first and the last means Jehovah. When we get to Revelation, the first and the last is Jesus. And the Alpha and the Omega in Revelation is Jesus. The beginning and the end in Revelation is Jesus. That's all from 1917. So that's a bit of a change. 1917, all these references mean Jesus in the New Testament. A few years later, actually it means Jehovah and they completely changed their tune. But when Jesus apparently chose them, he would have been comfortable that they're being attributed to Jesus. 
in the next video, it should be the last video, I'll be looking at the bridge between 1917 and their current teachings to see if we can see what they change and how they justify it. If you find any of this useful, then a like and subscribe comment, very much appreciated. I'd also like to know if you prefer these videos cut up smaller like this, or if you'd prefer one long video. I can go either way. Thanks.